Long time no see. Welcome back to Mecha Mondays. After moving into a new apartment, I finally got all my video games situated, so it was a good opportunity to play something new. Something different. So, I figured why not find a game for the original Xbox. While at my local retro game store last weekend, I came across this curiosity called Murakumo Renegade Mech Pursuit. The box art looks cool, it's an Xbox exclusive, and it was even developed by From Software the geniuses behind both Dark Souls and Armored Core. But why haven't I heard of Murakumo until now? Hmm, well maybe it was before its time or something. I mean, it's got some badass flying mechs, what could possibly go wrong? <sighs> Murakumo Renegade Mech Pursuit should have had everything going for it. But sadly, high-speed action and stylish mech designs were not enough to overcome the game's numerous issues. So today on Mecha Mondays, let's dive into the mess that is Murakumo. As you can see, the game opens up with an adrenaline-inducing cutscene, which is more than enough to get any mecha fanboy excited. But looks aren't everything, so let's look at what this game really has to offer. The menu is a dead giveaway that something is wrong, as all the other play modes cannot be unlocked until you beat the entire scenario mode. I mean, we couldn't at least get a training mode or something? Alright, I guess we're doing scenario mode. The mission briefing informs you that the AI system of these defense robots has gone completely haywire, and it's up to you and your squad of mechs to intercept and destroy them. Pretty bland story if you ask me, but it doesn't help that the English voice acting is just so uninspired. We're just about at the rendezvous point with the Special Defense Force. Right away, something just doesn't feel right about the controls. Your movement is limited to the left control stick like most games, but the problem is that you cannot adjust the camera angle. Instead, you have to alter your entire direction with the left trigger and the left control stick. This gets annoying very quickly as you waste precious seconds crashing into buildings you simply weren't able to see. Additionally, the controls feel sluggish. I understand that some of the mechs display lower mobility due to their size and weight, but even some of the faster mechs have delayed movement. I mean, come on, this is Murakumo Renegade Mech Pursuit. These mechs are supposed to feel like fighter jets or something. <sighs> At least there are five different mechs to choose from, each with their own unique set of weapons like Gatling guns, missiles, and laser swords. However, there's no customization whatsoever. Which is a real shame, because From Software does customization so well in its Armored Core series. On the bright side, if you can call it that, you can beat the first three missions in a matter of minutes. However, don't be fooled, because in typical From Software fashion, the difficulty becomes almost unbearable. Take Mission 4, for example. It took me over an hour to beat, meaning I had to replay it multiple times until I discovered which mech was best suited for the job. But even that's not good enough. If you miss one attack opening, you might as well just restart the mission. Unless you want to watch the enemy kamikaze into the side of this tower. Anyways, you'll more than likely get bored of this game because each mission is exactly the same. Destroy the enemy robot before it flies away. I mean, maybe there are some other mission types, but again, I can't play them until I beat the main storyline. I mean, if you think about it, there really isn't that much to do in this game. So I guess we can focus on the level design or something. You'll notice pretty quickly that the developers were inspired by real-life cities. I mean, come on, this is clearly Central Park in New York City. And I think this is supposed to be Yankee Stadium? <laughs> What's next? Am I gonna run into the cast of Seinfeld or something like that? Jerry, be careful. You'll be oh, wait, what? My character's name is Jerry? Are they serious? Well, it's Gerald, technically, but close enough. Also, is that supposed to be the World Trade Center? Spooky. Anyways, if you get tired of sightseeing, you can always just browse through the game's intelligence data, which is just, you know, a fancy word for the story. There's something about a Middle East oil war, an evil corporation, the United States, blah blah blah. Really? If this game had better controls, I think it would have been a whole lot more enjoyable. 
so I'd say reviewers back in 2003 were fair to give this game low scores. Either way, I still think it's strange that I've never heard of this game until last week. Huh. It's almost as if someone's trying to erase Murakumo from history. Oh my god, it all makes sense. New York City? The Twin Towers? Middle East Oil War? All of this led to the creation of the drone-like robots you have to defeat in the game. We already have thousands of defense drones in real life. This game was trying to warn us. It's only a matter of time before our drones become self-aware and start crashing into buildings, meaning we'll have to develop high-speed mechs and shoot them down. Murakumo got bad reviews not for being a game, but for being a premonition. Only bad reviews would keep people from playing the game, so someone was trying to hide us from the truth. Who could it be? Who could it be? Well, the game tells us. The main character's name is Gerald Rothschild. Yeah, just like the Rothschild family that controls the world's finances as part of the New World Order, which was originally initiated by the Illuminati. Or, maybe the reason this game went under the radar is because Ubisoft just sucks at marketing. Classic Ubisoft. Anyways, thanks again for watching. I hope you found that last bit enjoyable. I sure did. <laughs> and let me know in the comments below what you want to see on Mecha Mondays. Take it easy and catch you next time.